I'm sure most, if not all of you watching, are familiar with or have at least seen images such as this of the CMB, or Cosmic Microwave Background, and its reputation as being light from the early universe released when neutral atoms first formed and space first became transparent. However, not to be confused with the CMB is another background light present in the night sky that instead glows in the infrared. This Cosmic Infrared Background, or CIB, is nowhere near as widely discussed or known about yet studying it is able to reveal several interesting and fundamental truths about our universe, including the formation of stars over all cosmic time, the distribution of dark matter in the universe, and possibly even the time when the first ever stars were produced, as well as the first black holes. So today, I will be discussing the cosmic infrared background, which you likely haven't heard of. Let's begin with understanding the physical processes which go into producing the CIB, which will lead intuitively then into what it is what it shows and why it's so fascinating. Almost all of the light produced by stars in the universe is in the optical and ultraviolet part of the electromagnetic spectrum. However, if you were to look at the sky through an infrared telescope, you would see strong emission around many galaxies and from within our own. In fact, the night sky is brightest in the infrared compared to any other wavelength range. See, the universe doesn't just contain stars and planets, and the vast darkness of empty space isn't truly empty. Instead, it contains a lot of interstellar and even intergalactic dust. By this, I mean literal dust grains or large molecules left over from supernovae explosions and when dying stars eject their outer layers. This dust is of a similar size as the wavelength of UV and optical light, of order a few hundred nanometers, emitted by stars, and so easily absorbs starlight. The dust then re-emits some of its absorbed energy as lower frequency light, namely infrared light. So the dust in the universe causes it to shine so brightly in the infrared. Infrared light is longer wavelength compared to optical and UV, but it's still much shorter than microwave light, which the CMB is detected at. So just like the CMB, we cannot see it with our own eyes, but it can be and has been detected by various modern telescopes. The cosmic infrared background is the collection of all the infrared light from every distant galaxy over a large range of redshifts. So from every galaxy over a large range of cosmic time. Since the universe is homogeneous and isotropic over such large scales, the CIB has a similar random distribution as the CMB, leading to images which by eye can look very similar. However, what it encodes is the distribution of larger scale structures compared to the initial density fluctuations which are captured by the CMB. Let me explain. In order to truly detect and create a map of the CIB on the sky, we must firstly remove all foreground sources of infrared radiation from our measurements. The main culprit of this is the dust in our own solar system, known as zodiacal dust emission, but more in particular, the dust within the interstellar medium of our own Milky Way. The Milky Way disk dominates the infrared when we point our telescopes towards the galactic centre, so accounting for it and removing it from our analysis is vital. Once we remove these local sources of infrared light, what we are left with is the cosmic infrared background, or all the infrared light from extra galactic sources. This light technically accounts for all of the formation of every star and galaxy, and so encodes some really useful information about cosmic history and how the universe has evolved over time. This is really what makes the CIB so useful to astrophysicists and cosmologists in particular, since it is a measurable probe of how star formation has changed over time, which we can then fit models to. Without getting bogged down in all of the mathematics, simply in order to produce a cosmic infrared background which looks similar to the one we detect in our own universe, requires that galaxies formed in the past to be significantly more powerful than they are today. As in, the galaxies of the past shone much more brightly in the infrared and thus required much more luminous stars in order to illuminate their dust content, which leads to them glowing so strongly at these longer wavelengths. This agrees with the idea that the star formation rate peaked several billion years ago at a time known as cosmic noon, when the universe was forming stars at the quickest rate in all of its history so far. These predictions have been backed up by actual observations, not just of the CIB, but of many individual ultra-luminous infrared galaxies. A class of galaxies which, as the name suggests, emit a significant amount of light in the infrared. We see many more of these at much further distances, and so from much further back in time. Obviously, the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum spans a large wavelength range, typically from one micron to one millimetre and detecting the CIB at different wavelengths in this range gives different images of the infrared emission on the sky. 
but collectively, I hope you can see how the CIB is a useful tracer of star formation and dust emission throughout cosmic time. Compared to the CMB, the CIB is much less well studied and is only recently coming into its own as a feasible dataset from which to study the universe with, but with the advent of future infrared sky surveys, will surely become a much more potent and dependable dataset for studying our universe. I will leave links to some research papers in the description for those of you who wish to read up more rigorously about the CIB. And with that, I hope you've enjoyed. Consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.